first of all, how is uh, wh where is Smite at in, in esports context right now? Yeah, so we're basically in our third season of Smite Esports. So we had our launch tournament just over uh, two years ago now, and we've had two world championships since then. And now we're midway through our season three, leading up to the world championship, which will be again in January of uh, 2017. Uh, this particular event here at DreamHack is actually incredibly exciting for us. It's our, we've held uh, many lands in Europe over the years, but this is our first international land hosted in Europe. Uh, so at this event, we have nine teams from around the world. We have uh, three North American teams, three European teams, a Brazilian team, a Spanish speaking Latin American team, and a Chinese team. So uh, it's been really exciting to bring really the best in the world uh, here to Sweden and, uh, and see them compete uh, in Europe and to give our European fans really a chance to see a lot of the teams they've followed online for many years that were in other continents. You, uh, you, you launched the, uh, the Smite Pro League last year and uh, did the inaugural world championship, I think it was, with a $1 million prize pool. And then, uh, how, how, what are the major lessons you've learned since then with, with, uh, in getting to where you are now? Yeah it's, yeah, it's actually interesting. We had our very first uh, Smite World Championship at the beginning of 2015, actually, we crowdsourced and reached a prize pool of almost $2.6 million. And then in, uh, and one of the things we learned was in that first inaugural season, we actually paid out 90% of all the prize pool that we paid out went to four teams. And it was enormous. It was uh, over $3 million in total prizing for the year. So in the next season, which led up to the 2016 World Championship that we completed in January, we really said, let's keep the prizing uh, very similar, a little bit more than the previous year. So we still gave out over $3 million in total prizing. But let's spread the wealth a lot more. Uh, because what we found, one of the biggest lessons we learned was that when you're trying to build a new scene, uh, you need to make sure uh, the wealth is spread down far enough that new people have an incentive to come into the scene and still break in, right? Uh, and know that they can get rewarded for that. Uh, so we've spent a lot of time really trying to structure our league in a way that obviously the best teams get rewarded best, uh, but that new teams can still feel like they can come into the scene and make a difference and, and be rewarded. Uh, and that all the people that are basically, it's a full-time job, uh, to be in something like the Smite Pro League so that all the people that participate in that league uh, can get rewarded to a level that makes them feel like their time was worth it. I'm guessing a, a deeper prize pool also helps with the stability of the, the teams of, like below the top tier? It, it absolutely does, yeah. So, and we have, uh, we have eight teams in our European Pro League and eight teams in our North American Pro League. Uh, so, I mean, you're talking uh, plus, we have a challengers league uh, behind that for uh, the emerging pros in the scene. So it's a lot of people uh, putting a lot of time uh, into this game, and, and it, it definitely helps a lot with the stability of the scene. Uh, you still have a lot of roster changes and things like that, which is just kind of part of the fun of esports, I think. Uh, but it's uh, we've learned a lot. I've, I've been, uh, and it's very exciting for us to be. Uh, witness to be here at this time when esports in general are exploding so much and all of us across the industry are learning so much about uh, what is the right way to run an esports league, what is the right way to set up a game for success. Um, you, you've, some esports publishers, including you, take a very hands-on approach for how they, they, they run the leagues and, and others are very hands-off and sort of let it evolve on, on their own. What do you see as the, as the pros and cons of the approach that you guys have picked? Yeah, I think either approach really can work a lot. I think we really view one of the most important aspects of esports is around the community of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really feel that uh, esports brings a focal point for the whole community to rally around, for them to have heroes emerge from the scene, uh, for them to all have something to aspire to and to grow. And one of the reasons we chose to be more hands-on was to actually just just give our esports scene high-res personality, right? So we kind of have our own kind of personality and goofiness, and we like to think, you know, we're uh, a little laid back. Sometimes don't take ourselves over. We take what 
we take the output of what we're doing very seriously, but try not to take ourselves uh, too seriously. Right. And so I feel like a lot of, uh, to us, we wanted to give our esports a personality that felt like us versus necessarily having uh, a, a scene that, that was felt like something else. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at the same time, I can totally understand people that do it the other way. I think either can be successful, but for us and what we were wanting to achieve for both the studio and the game, mm -hmm. uh, we've been super happy with this approach. So um, you're in season three of uh, the Smite Pro League. Um, when this season is, is, is done, other than obviously season four, what, what's sort of the next step for Smite Esports? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's really interesting. One of the things that makes Smite unique among the MOBA scene is that we actually have a console version as well. So one of the things we're focusing on this year, in addition to the Smite PC scene, which continues to grow amazingly, is continuing to grow our Smite console league. So this is actually, we're starting the very first season of the Smite console league actually next month. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a very interesting uh, uh, experiment for us to uh, watch our console players get the opportunity to participate uh, in the Pro League. And then for next year, I think we're already doing a lot of planning. Obviously, we don't have too much to reveal yet on exactly what the Season 4 is going to look like. But one thing that's been great about Smite is each season, each year has continued to grow and improve as we learn our lessons as the game continues to get bigger and have a much larger fan base. So I'm sure you'll see See us continuing to grow, just like we grew this year, really by holding this tournament and being able to have a major international tournament here in Europe. I'm sure next year you'll see us continue to grow and do new things. It's interesting about console. Uh, I, I was wondering, um, do you find that the console version of Smite attracts a different sort of audience than, than you might be used to, given that on console, Smite is one of the only MOBAs that's around, and on PC there's a lot of competition in that space? Uh, I, I do, actually, yeah. I mean, I think it's... Uh, Primarily on the PC, you're attracting people that really know about MOBAs, right? Probably most people that come and play Smite at this at this time, for the first time, have played another MOBA, or at least have friends that have played another MOBA. They get the genre. On the console side, uh, you still have a lot of that, and we have a lot of people actually that love the game on PC and they play with their friends on uh, on the Xbox or PS4. But we also do get a lot of people that really this is their first MOBA, uh, and that's very interesting. And I think it's it's helped us grow as a game. It's helped us really understand what things str what people struggle with as they come new into the genre and making sure we get more and more of that into the game. So we talked a lot about Smite so far, but you're also here with, with Paladins yes. and hosting a tournament in that game. So where, where, where is that game at right now on, on the esports front? Yeah, it's super early, you know, so we're still in a closed beta uh, for Paladins. What we're running here, we're running a $100,000 what we're calling Founders Tournament. So this is really a reward for those pro players and competitive players that have been helping us out during the early closed beta to really grow the game and to understand what makes the game competitive. So uh, this, and that's really to a certain extent almost how we view this tournament is as a great reward for those people that are here helping us shape the game early. Uh, we have a very much a philosophy at high res that we start our betas uh, very early relative to where other companies do. We uh, make changes very rapidly based on feedback that we're getting in that beta and we'll run the beta as long as we have to in order to make the game great. So the um, so these guys that are up here on the stage are helping us so much in terms of how to shape the game, how to build it, how to make it both a great game and a great eSport. Uh, and even just sit, sitting here hanging out with the, with the guys and getting to have conversations with them and understand how they're thinking about the game and the, and the uh, issues and great things that they do see about the game has been really helping us uh, shape where we'll take the game. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see hopefully Paladins grow organically over many years in the same way that Smite did. All right, last question. Um, who are you rooting for for the Smite tournament? <laughs> yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, I like, I am always rooting for game fives. You know, I, uh, I, I really, I, one of the things that's been great now several years into this scene is you really do get so close to a lot of the players. You feel like, even just when you're watching them on streams, uh, and of course we see them in events like this, they almost feel like family. So I think uh, all the teams are uh, exceptional uh, this year. Obviously, um, you know, I, 
I just want good games. <laughs> so, so I hope we'll see, uh, uh, you know, a game five uh, final would be really exciting. But, uh, uh, but there, there's some tough competition here. We'll see what happens. All right, Steve, thank you very much for talking yeah, to us. Thanks.